All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brian Cantian. I am the business development manager here with Foundation Software. Uh, if you check your screen, you'll see you have a couple introduction poll questions. You could take a look at those. Give us your best answer. We'd greatly appreciate it. I'd like to welcome you here to the Analytics Made Easy for the project management team here. Uh, we are excited to partner with Pronovos and also to have Casey Dillon from Atlas Excavating, it's one of our mutual clients, here to present a real live case study. Um, next screen, there we go. Uh, just some information about the organizations here up on the screen, some mutual clients, what they're saying about uh, Foundation and the Pronovos teams. Uh, obviously, Foundation here have been in business since around 75, or 85. And we have a suite of products that we've added into our portfolio over the past few years. Uh, it's an exciting time here with Foundation and with Pronovos, giving the deep analytics abilities that you know any canned application is just going to uh, lack. You know, really getting into providing your business with the real-time important information that you need right at your fingertips. We can collect all kinds of information. We'll give you all kinds of reports, lots of value, but when it comes down to your special needs and custom reporting capabilities, Pronovos is top of the list. So today we're going to talk about Foundation and Project HQ. It's a project management uh, application that allows you to uh, manage and control your projects uh, to mobile uh, enabled application as well. So your project managers can work within and control that uh, their projects as they move along. And that information will seamlessly integrate into uh, Foundation as well as uh, QuickBooks. And uh, we'll talk about that and how that's going to impact the Pronovus data set. They're able to utilize and analyze, report back to you. We'll have Casey jump in and talk about their experience here with uh, both Pronovos and Foundation. And uh, we'll kick it over to Bruce and the Pronovos team to talk about the capabilities, the uh, analytics marketplace, and what's next for Pronovos. So with that, I'm gonna kick it off to uh, Derek Eklum. Derek Eklum is here uh, with the foundation side and he'll be talking about uh, Project HQ. Stop sharing here, Derek, take over. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you much there, Brian. Uh, and you guys should be able to see my, uh, see my screen now. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, and and uh, my role here at Foundation, I've been, been around uh, here at Foundation for quite a while, probably about the same amount of time Brian's been. But uh, my focus is on uh, uh, Project HQ sales, uh, mobile sales, also, I also get into uh, and yeah, what I'd like to kind of walk through here is, is uh, our new Project HQ suite. Um, so, so basically what this is, is it's a web-based project management platform uh, that would work for your uh, operations, you know, out in the field, on tablets, uh, even smartphones. They can use computers too, but the whole idea is that they can capture uh, and enter uh, information um, on the go, and then it'll communicate back to Foundation or it can also communicate back to QuickBooks. We just are releasing out a uh, integration that works with QuickBooks in much the same way that I'm about to walk through and kind of show you guys uh, this here. So of course that'll have some advantages where you know your, your operations and your project management team don't need to be into the nuts and bolts of the accounting department, uh, their information. There's more of kind of a separation of that information, yet at the same time, at the end of the day, these two products will talk uh, to keep everybody on the same page. Um, and this is something that we've been working on for about five or six years now, uh, and just the, the need is there. Um, we've been hearing constantly from uh, our existing customer base, um, you know, where we need a web-based project management uh, system, especially one that would communicate to foundation. That's what everybody's been kind of clamoring for. So uh, this is the uh, this is this is basically what we rolled out, and the way that this is laid out here uh, is you have an overview screen. Uh, where your, your project manager can kind of get a snapshot of where things are. And the way I like to explain this is it's kind of broken down to three different sections. There's uh, the main section, which will kind of come into play with our conversation today, called Project HQ. That's where you get into document management. So everything from RFIs and submittals to 
uh, more impactful documents like AIAs, change orders, uh, purchase orders, subcontracts. I'd say that's probably the main part of the, uh, the platform. The other two, one would be uh, called Executive HQ. That is more or less job cost reporting uh, from, the, from the field. So if you're, 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 uh, you're, your PMs wanted to see you know, budget versus actual for, for a project, uh, that, that's kind of where they could run that, run, run those types of reports. And then the other part of it is called Crew HQ, which is a scheduling and labor dispatching part of the software. Um, so the, the main page here, again, kind of an overview page. And then the left-hand side has the toolbars uh, with Project HQ. Underneath that would be Schedule. That would be the Crew HQ. Um, underneath that would be a list of contacts, reports, which would get into more of the Executive HQ side, and then Setup, which is primarily customization of all your different forms. Of course, any type of project management uh, software uh, worth, worth anything is going to give you the ability to customize different documents and forms and whatnot. Um, now, kind of to zero in more on specifically what we're going to be covering today, let me jump into the Project HQ part of the platform. So this will pull up all of the active uh, projects, jobs, contracts, you know, however you want to look at it from your foundation database. And yeah, integrations are definitely the big piece of this. Um, jobs, uh, vendors, customers, employees, equipment items, inventory items, cost codes, cost classes, these are all information in records that'll pull out of your foundation database. And the same can be said for QuickBooks users too, you know, jobs, estimates, items. Um, they, they, they just use some slightly different terminology, but it's really the same concept. So you'd have your list of, of active projects here where you can manage those. And there's tools up in the top uh, corner where if you wanted to do a, a keyword search, if you wanted to filter, if you want to run a list. So those are going to be common, common features that you're going to see really throughout the entire platform. But uh, drilling down into a specific job, like if I drill into this Lake County Trust rebuild job, <clears throat> this is now looking at information primarily concerning this specific job. So now as a project manager, I'm in this one location. I can kind of oversee everything that's, that's going on here, um, which is this initial page overview. So there's the ability to create and manage different daily log entries. Um, there's the schedule, so that would get right into the crew HQ part. Uh, email integration, of course, is uh, going to be a part of this. So this will tie into your Outlook or Gmail or Google, wh whatever you're using for email, you'll be able to incorporate that here in HQ. And then uh, an overview for documents pertaining to this project. Uh, there's also a big section here for action items where you're going to sign out different tasks to individuals and other contacts uh, on this project. And then uh, just from an informational standpoint, weather conditions. And then down the left-hand side, just kind of going through all the different features out there so you guys can get an idea what, to, what, what, goes into, what comes into play here. Um, underneath the overview dashboard would be detail. Um, so this would be similar to the same information that you'd have over in Foundation when you go to create a job record. And actually, if you look way over to the, uh, to the right, there's a Foundation logo. That just lets you know that, hey, this job is tracked not only here in HQ, but also in Foundation, which is Normally the case, uh, I, you could probably make an argument if the project's just in the bidding phase, you might, uh, might not have it linked over on the foundation side, but normal, normal cases, that, uh, that'll, that'll be there. And then underneath resources, that would be scheduled, so that will jump you, I guess kind of give you an idea what that uh, would look like here. So this would be uh, the crew HQ part of the platform. So this is where uh, your project manager or whomever uh, would be able to manage their list of jobs, assign or create tasks, assign resources to the tasks like employees or equipment items or other records that can pull out a foundation. Uh, and then the other side of this is being able to send out email or text notifications to those employees, letting them know the details as far as the task and time frames and jobs and things like that. So uh, yeah, that's a that's probably yeah, one third of the uh, the entire the entire platform. Um, is the crew HQ. And then back into uh, where we left off here on the, uh, the project HQ, the document side, a list of team members, just a, a truncated list of contacts uh, that would just be specific to this job here. And again, these all pull in from your foundation database. You can always create these out here standalone if you want to, but you know, t typically our, our customers uh, using project HQ, they're going to pull these records in from foundation. And then to the first of the big areas, as I like to call it here, work management. So these would be different different types of job documents. So 
Uh, action items is up first. So this is where you can always create different action items. These can be duplicated project to project because you're probably doing at least uh, in the ballpark the same types of uh, uh, assignments on different projects. And then we get to AIA Worksheet. Um, so this is a fairly new feature to the platform here. And the idea, um, and this is, it can also be said the same for uh, change orders, which I'll get into in a moment, along with purchase orders and subcontracts, is it allows uh, the project managers, basically the people that uh, you know, know the ins and outs of the job, that are running the job, that have the, uh, the, the regular conversations with the owner, the general contractor, whatnot, um, they can create and manage all these documents, uh, email them directly out of here, negotiate back and forth, change amounts, change percents, and then when the time is right, when it's approved, when it's okayed, this information can get pushed back into foundation. Uh, so this is all it, it, what you'd expect if you're used to foundation, all the same G702, 703 forms. You've got the header information. You've got your schedule of values, which this can all pull in from your job budget, if that's how it works out for you, or you can always just create this uh, really from scratch if you wanted to. Uh, you can create your applications, uh, you know, entering in your dollars or your percents. You can, you know, default in your retainage. You can create custom retainage rules as well. Um, you can always print these. And yeah, this you know, has the actual formats here. Now you can also create custom, I mentioned earlier, custom being able to create custom templates. You can create custom templates for these too. So that's something that we've uh, been asked here at Foundation for, for a number of years back in the home software, which you can't do, but here in HQ, if you did need to, you could always customize your, your AIA billing. Uh, but yeah, these would be able to, we use the term sync here at Foundation. So any, any of our mobile products that push information into Foundation, you'll see that sync work. So yeah, these, this can push into Foundation to uh, update accounts receivable, to populate uh, receivables, general ledger, job cost reports, uh, which is where, uh, where, where you know, the topic of this, uh, this webinar kind of comes into play. So AIAs is definitely a big feature. Um, and then kind of going down through the other, other sections here, daily logs, kind of mentioned that earlier up on the front screen. So just a place to keep track of uh, da daily occurrences on the project. Documents, uh, this is where you get into RFIs, submittals, any number of other custom documents you want to create, you can. You can also get into uh, punch lists. And then underneath cost management is budget information. So this is all the same detailed budget information that you would find uh, over on the foundation side, you know, cost codes, cost classes, uh, if you track bid amounts, if you track quantities, hours, that's all, all there, all the same that's what you'd, you'd find in foundation. And then underneath that, uh, change order management. Um, so this is another big feature really same concept as AIAs where the project managers can take ownership here through HQ to create these documents, send them out, email them out, negotiate back and forth. And then once uh, they are approved, or I guess whenever you deem them ready, is when they can push into your foundation database. And, and uh, typically what happens here is you would start on the left-hand side as a request and then convert that over to an actual change that would push into foundation. Now, if you wanted to kind of cut out the request step and just enter in a change order, you could always just do that too. Uh, but it is all the actual coding. So it's not just creating a, uh, you know, a, a, a Word document or a PDF with verbiage on it that you're sending out. Like if I hop into, into one here, yeah, I've got, I've got a bunch out there, but let me just kind of jump into one to kind of give you an idea. Um, so you have your details, which you're filling out all the, the main verbiage that would appear like on the the header and the footer section of a, a change order, I suppose, but then you get into the scope of work. So this is where you would fill out the detail that would could get printed off to the, the owner or customer. You can always customize what shows, what doesn't show, but the, the key is really breaking out, okay, that's what's going to the uh, the owner or customer. How does that affect my, my back end and the budget side? So this is where you can you know associate how does that uh, update cost codes, cost classes, and kind of give you an idea. Let me just show you if I go to edit. Um, that way I can kind of show you the coding without kind of going through everything 100%. Um, so if I just come down here and add a row, I'll just call it kind of sample RFD line here. Uh, quantities, if you, if you need these. Again, if you don't need to, you can always ignore them. Uh, cost, uh, what's nice is you can actually just plug in a markup percent that can calculate out your price. 
And then over here is where you can allocate, okay, you know, based on my cost codes and, and cost classes, how does this, uh, this need to break down? Um, so that would be kind of an example of what you're doing. So you can create everything, code it out, uh, you know, save this, and then right from here you'd be able to print this. You can always email it directly out. Um, these you can also duplicate. I mentioned that back on your action items. So if you have uh, similar types of forms and documents, you can always do, the, do that. But the idea is you're creating the request, sending them out, uh, you know, tracking the, the negotiation process back and forth, the correspondence. And then uh, once that's complete, that can be converted uh, to an actual change order. And once it's an actual change, that's what would be able to push and sync into, uh, into foundation. Uh, to update the whole uh, job cost module, which updates, you know, the, the revised budget, affects reports, everything like that. Um, so that's the change order process. And then lastly here, uh, again, kind of in the same wheelhouse, as far as being able to create documents from the field uh, on the go that'll talk back to foundation. We have purchase orders, we have subcontracts. Um, there's also, you can create the change orders to these uh, if, there, if there's uh, changes. And it's all the, the same as what we kind of experienced on the AIAs as we experienced on the uh, uh, change order side of it. It's all the detail. So like with purchase orders, you can pull from an item list if you have our inventory module, or if you don't, you can just fill out the detail. You can code out from a, a, you know, a committed standpoint what cost codes and cost classes are affected here. And yeah, the same idea would uh, come into play with uh, subcontracts as well. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the main idea here with HQ is it's a, a web-based platform designed to be used on the go, uh, tablets, even smartphones. It can always be used on computers, uh, but it, 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 it affords companies the opportunity where their project management team, their, you know, their operations team, they can do what they need to do, yet they're not logged into foundation getting in the way of accounting, yet at the same time that information, the pertinent information can pass back and forth. Um, so, you know, hopefully that's kind of a good overview of what we have going on here. And, you know, if you do have follow-up questions, just feel free to reach out to myself or, or Brian, and, and we'd be happy to, happy to give you a hand with, uh, with that. Um, so, uh, with that being said, I'll, I'll turn, uh, turn everybody's attention over to Casey from uh, Atlas Excavate, Excavating, excuse me, um, and uh, uh, he can kind of keep, uh, keep this moving here. Awesome. Thanks for the introduction. That's an amazing platform there. Thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, brief introduction of myself. My name is Casey Dillon, President and CEO of Atlas Excavating. We're a heavy civil contractor in Indiana. We specialize in pipe and dirt. Uh, we'll do about 60 million revenue, about 150 employees. So, um, you know, as we're growing, we're stretching the limits of how much data we can consume. So uh, we've been a foundation customer since it was DOS. So I want to say, you know, early 90s, late 80s. Um, so, so we're all bought in on foundation. We're an HCSS house uh, from estimating and job cost. And then we layer all this stuff together to, uh, to make it all work. Go ahead, hit the next slide, please. Um, this analytics platform from Pernovos, this is kind of their dashboard that's gonna show us what things we can jump into. Uh, part of my presentation today is to kind of show you guys my favorite reports. Um, and you know, this is one of those things when you look at sales for a software, and it really says you can be up and running in 48 hours. I can vouch for that. When we said go, um, they, we were up and running in less than a day. I mean, it was we were up and seeing real data very quickly. Um, we're working through building custom dashboards now, so that's definitely something they can offer. And again, I was going to show you my three favorite reports, just so you can just so I can show you we're seeing value immediately. So the history of how we got here, if you kind of follow this graph from left to right. You know, back in the day, uh, we used to do everything by pen and paper. We put estimates together the old, the old fashioned way. Then we buy HCSS heavy bid and we start putting bids together and we create a lot of data. Well, at some point now we have jobs. So now we buy foundation. At some point we lay on Procore. And so now we have, we, we have just abundance of data that sometimes we struggle like interpreting it or getting it somewhere. So then we kind of went backwards and we in our company probably have a thousand spreadsheets that we maintain all the time just to make sure we can see it in a presentable way where we can digest it for young managers or field guys. You know, it may be perfect coming out to make a whip or a financial statement, but sometimes it's just a lot of data overload. And so we kind of jumped into this like huge spreadsheet management and shared Google Docs to understand this. 
And then we come in and we find a program like Pro Pronovos that plugs directly into foundation. It's like a layer over the top, if you will. And it just takes data that's existing and makes it a, makes it a better presentation and easier way to digest some, some really big subjects. So again, I wanna show you some of my key dashboards. Um, we saw value in right away. This company billing analysis, what I really like about this is, number one, you can see this box in the middle of the screen where there's green, blue, and red. That shows by project manager how many billings we have out there, um, how many are left to go, and how many are done. So then on the right, I'm, I've got this constant feed of all information of what have we built so far this month? Um, what do we have left to build? How many projects? And at any given time, anybody who has access to Procore or to Pronovos can just click on the manager and it'll show all their data. I, we didn't give you live data here. These are, these are more presentation slides. Uh, but then we can see by manager how much they've billed, what jobs are left to go, are we making money, are we overbuilt or underbuilt? And, and instead of making several different reports out of foundation, which, which all are accurate, this is the same data. It's just easier to digest because we can see more people at the same time. Bruce, you got a note in there you want to talk about? Well, you know, um, yeah, I, I actually really like this this dashboard. And Casey, uh, I'm curious, if you don't mind, I'd love to uh, ask you this question in real time. But when you when you saw this particular dashboard, uh, was was there anything that came to mind in terms of um, um, the uh, um, uh, benefits that, that you saw right away? You talked about time to value. And I think this was maybe one of the first dashboards you saw. So I'm, I'm curious uh, what came to mind when. Yeah, when so we're, we're running about 40 active projects a month um, and we're running about eight managers. So if everybody's got between three and 10 jobs, sometimes a job can get lost. And, and so we, unfortunately, you know, our record shows we missed a couple billings earlier in the year when May and June started happening, we get busy and this report, you know, we can see it. I mean, this, this, you know, this dashboard, we can see, hey, you know, manager A is missing a job and this is about how much he needs to bill to not be underbilled. So, I mean, it's given them immediate insight of how much do I need to bill on this job to not be underbilled or overbilled um, and just give them data that they didn't have to kill calculate. It's, it's data straight out of foundation. I love it. All right. Want to head to the next one? All right. This is this is Casey's term money graph. I don't I don't know that Parnovos uh, takes this, but what I love about this um, is this. If you look at this graph in the middle, uh, the blue line is the billing, the green line is the cash, and the black line is cost. And you know, as as an owner or as a leader, we try to teach our teams to always overbill, right? Get as much to be aggressive as you can. But what we found is this year the time lag of getting paid. You know, we may be overbilled on the thirtieth of the month. But by the time the owner's taken 60 days to pay us, our cash is still behind. So this graph was just such powerful imaging to show the managers we're still negative cash on these jobs because we're not billing enough up front. So then after they can see this graph, now they can start understanding I got to be positive cash flow, not just positive billing. Um, and it just made a huge impact. And probably the first 45 days, we probably increased our cash position by a million dollars because we can see the data. It's not just in on an accounts receivable report, you know, mixed in with the WIP and an over under billing report. This is just very visual by job site that our guys can make a huge difference at what they're doing within the month that they're actually working. And, you know, Casey, you, um, I know that you and I had a discussion about this graph before. And what I heard you say is you've spent quite a bit of time educating the team on the importance of this information. And, um, and I, I think uh, you said that, um, uh, a visual a, a visual graph like this saved you a great great deal of time from the education perspective um and and we also talked about um how this contributes to the whip and and I love you said uh whip is more um backwards looking where something like this is a leading indicator um any anything else when you consider this um this particular dashboard anything else comes to mind around leading indicators and how it impacts the 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 whip and if not it's quite all right i'm just throwing a question out yeah that's uh, a good in, good in one um you know i would say you know everybody lives and dies on the whip that is an accounting person and i think the whip's 100 percent accurate the day it's produced the reality is a week later or two weeks later it's not as it's not a great indicator 
where using something, it's pulling live data. So, I mean, we can get this within the month, not just one day of the month, which is usually, you know, between the 10th and the 20th of the following month of when the whip's created. So the real time data makes a difference, um, you know, between the billing module and the money graph, my managers know how much they got a bill, know what the average lead time is of getting paid from a customer, and they can start steering this down the direction of getting us in a positive cash situation. Yeah, yeah, I I like it. There's a there's this there's a saying um, or or this concept called um, earned value analysis that's very difficult to do without tools like this. And as a matter of fact, I know that your your controller was asking about that there are two components that um, that goes with that earned value analysis the first is the cost um, uh, the cost price index and oh, I'm sorry the cost performance index and then the schedule performance index this is something that I think um, when I hear you talk about um, time to value this is one of the things that comes to mind because it takes so much time to do that earned value analysis. And this is that, again, that, that cost price index. Do you, uh, just another question about this particular dashboard. I know that you are uh, a man that, that uh, focuses on educating and teaching people how to get better. Um, what, what other teaching moments did you uh, discover as you started to look at this dashboard, if any at all? Well, it's really that they can control their own destiny. You know, it's not a matter of me, you know, Al brought, you know, beating them up, yelling at them. It's a matter of they can see their own destiny. We can show them graphs of what success looks like. And we can show graphs of like, hey, we got an opportunity to get better here. And then they can start saying, okay, okay, if that's winning, I want to do more of that. I mean, mm -hmm. the concept, everybody wants to win. And if we can show them the tools to what winning looks like, they're going to naturally gravitate to doing it the right way. And so rather than, you know, having a process that we've got to like really punish somebody to follow ABC steps, uh, you know, a visualization, a visualization like this, that's live data, they can just do it on their own. Um, and, and, and we're talking kids that I've took years to try to teach this to still don't have a good grasp of it. And you show them the graph like, Oh, now I get it. I get it. And then also literally 30 days later, they look different. And then you start going now we're three or four months into it. You can see the difference and it's showing up in our cash right now. I love it. I appreciate that. All right. Shall we go to the next one? Sure. All right. Well, the executive dashboard, you know, any, anybody that the executive loves to be, have a dashboard named after them. Um, this one is particularly powerful um, because I love, I can see our trending revenue, um, on the top left, I can see our um, retainage, what our current billings are. I mean, it's just, just kind of a snapshot view of everything. The graph down at the bottom is great because from left to right, it's showing me over billings on the left and under billings on the right. And, and don't we all find this true? You know, when you're looking at your whip and you find 40 jobs to manage, you only look at the two best ones and the three worst ones. And you just try to make the, the, the good ones better and the bad ones less worse. Um, and this graph really just helps me focus in of where do I put my time instead of having to look at all 40 reports, I can say, hey, these three at the bottom, man, I got to make a difference on those. Um, the cash, the cash, the trial cash balance is also beneficial. I really like the graph right there in the middle. And it's kind of hard to see where there's, there's an up and down with an average current six month average. That's our average collection terms. So I can see when do we really try to make a difference down just a little bit Yeah, right there. That graph is amazing because we can see when we put effort into collections. Our average collection time goes down. And then all of a sudden, if we get busy doing change orders or bidding jobs or doing something else, that thing sneaks up, you know, 15 days, 20 days. I'm like, all right, now we can put our eye back on the ball and go say, we can make a difference in some of these numbers or we can see the trending that our efforts are paying off. And it, it's just really powerful to see it visually. Did you, uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, before you started using Pronovo's, uh, I know that day sales outstanding was a uh, important key performance indicator for you. Uh, but how often did you look at that KPI before Pronovos and how often do you look at it now? Well, I would say before, uh, you know, we would have a biweekly accounts receivable conversation. You know, anything under 60 days, you're like, yeah, it'll be fine. Anything over six days, well, now we attack that. Um, and the reality is we're only managing the exceptions. We're only managing the ones over 60 days. Well, if we collect the good job sooner, that's just as good as collecting an old job sooner. Um, so we could really see the average coming down 
where when you're only managing the exceptions over 60 days, it's hard to make a dent and get anything, anything less than 60 days. Um, so when you can see all the jobs in totality, and you can see the current average, you can really make a difference. Yeah, you know, I believe when this was first launched, you, you looked at this and you took a, a moment and you studied this graph. Um, it, there is quite a bit of information that is uh, at your fingertips. When we built this, we tried to build it so that we give you the right amount of information. And then if you needed more data, you can click and drill in. When you first saw this and you were, were consuming the information, was there anything that stood out to you that was an aha moment? Uh, and the reason why I'm asking this question is uh, I'm going back to the, uh, the, the notion of uh, the fast time to value when you started to use Pronovos. So um, sometimes those aha moments can be valuable nuggets for you, but, uh, but was there any that of uh, those moments that you experienced? Well, I mean, just the kind of the order we went through these. So number one, for me, it's important to get the jobs built. Number two, get it collected. And number three, you know, what's the status of the company? So this, this, this level three executive is, you know, what's the amount of revenue we're doing per month? Man, you know, if, if I was to look at this graph, I'd go, why is this month flat? Well, then I can click on the numbers and I and very quickly see like, oh, we just don't have billings done yet. It's you know, still early in the month. I can look over at the right and I can see total number of employees. Um, if we're carrying 150 average and all of a sudden it's 125 for last week, well, what happened? Um, you know, so just very quick snapshots uh, make a difference. And I can see where that's at. And, and it's hard to see on the screen here, but that number of employees breaks down by labor, operator, foreman, um, carpenter, finisher. And so I can see how many people are working in different pay categories as it's as it's tracked in foundation and you just have great insight to what's actually going on without having to call every foreman and talk to every manager to figure out the, the big picture nice i like it well um shall we go on to the next one sure all right Ooh, company change orders this is an amazing one for us um I mean, clearly what we want to do is we all want to make sure we get paid for change orders work. We want to know how much work we're doing and we want to make sure we make money on the change orders. Um, so this graph very simply can show me um, by the year, active jobs or filters at the top, active closed. Um, I can pick the year, I can do approved, I can do pending, I can do rejected. And so I can see all this data and then shortly below that I can filter it by project manager. I can see how much each manager's done by change orders. Um, and then over on the right, I can see um, how much profit we're making on change. Are we doing change orders and losing money or are we doing change orders and make money? Um, what was amazing to me um, in this year, 2022, you know, obviously there's a lot of work in the industry. Um, we made a plan for our resources of how much we could do with our crews. Went out and got all that work because there's so much work last winter out there for everyone. And uh, we kind of said, this is our capacity. We're full. We started turning work away. Well, in the, in the year 2022, I think I just looked the other day, we had 500 change orders in the tune of about $5 million. Well, that, that's effectively like two crews worth of extra change order work that the staff, the equipment, the mechanics, everybody's managing this additional work. And so we're feeling the pain of overloading ourselves on work. And it wasn't that we got too many jobs, it's we underestimate how much change order work we're doing and how much effort that takes. Well, sure enough, I've got eight managers. When I look at that sheet, the two managers that are just struggling all the time have the most amount of change orders of anybody in the company. Well, yeah, I can see their pain. I can really feel... You know, so rather than me looking at a cost complete meeting and saying, hey, you're you're not getting the job done and, and put my foot in their butt, I can look at it and go, man, we need some help here. Like th there's some big scope changes and we need to get estimators involved instead of having managers do stuff. Um, but just the insights you can see that we didn't have before, um, you know, all that all the data existed. But, you know, in foundation, it's more like a job by job basis. Well, then if you print off 40 jobs, you got to digest it. You know, it just doesn't summarize as clearly as what this report does. Um, and it, it just made an excellent transition for us to make sure we could focus our efforts on who should be doing what. Yeah, that is quite a bit of change orders and a significant amount um, that that you generated in change orders. Um, when this this is a question that I have for you, and this is more of an educational moment for me and hopefully the audience as well. When you are processing change orders. Uh, 
everyone has a margin that they are trying to um, uh, um, uh, capture. Um, they have a target margin. When you when you're processing change orders, are are you religiously focused on what that margin needs to be at for the change orders, or is it just um, um, a situational uh, uh, event that happens? Well, for us, I mean, our process, if we follow it, should make the margin we expect. Um, mm -hmm. We try to charge people what it costs. We make our fair margin. Um, what what the worst thing for us is we did the work and we didn't get paid for it. You know, we don't have a pending out there. We didn't give a notification, you know, so this this just really helps us keep track of everything and see the number of change orders and go, well, that's why our change order log um, has so much data on it because we're doing so much more work because the plan changes. The engineers aren't as good. The plans aren't as good. Um, and it just creates a lot of data to track and follow. So if they follow the system, we ought to see the margins. What we can see is we've had a couple owners that are just really stickler about beating us up on change orders. And you can show it up on this graph and go, look, that guy's killing you on the negotiations. you got to start adding 20% so that you can get the right margin out the end. Um, and when you can see it visually, like, oh, yeah, I'm not making money on change orders. i got to change something. Well, then all of a sudden we can figure that out. Yeah. There is a section here that says this is an excellent tool for training. Um, this is us as software developers and data scientists looking at the information and also knowing a little bit about the industry. When when we wrote this, it was, it was something that hasn't been confirmed. Do you see this as a true statement? And it's okay if you don't. I, I, I hey, I'm I'm transparent, but this is how we see it. And I'm curious if this is the same as you as well. Well, you know, anytime you look back in history, as most accounting programs do, the first thing we all do look is for opportunity to get better. How did we? How did we? How did we goof it up last time? And how do we get better in the future? Um, so, I mean, that's just reality. That's how we all look at it. You watch a football game. The coaches watch the film afterwards. Say, well, you screwed up. You should have done it this way. Well, we do the same thing as business leaders. So in my mind, how we improve that is we shorten the timetable of the, from the time we did the event to the time we learned the lesson. And the shorter that timetable is, the less likely we are to repeat it. The, and the more honest and open we are, like you said, we can share it to other people so that they learn the lesson faster as well. And then as an organization, we just get better because we're honest with ourselves or where we goofed up and where we can improve. And it, so yeah, training, visualization, these graphs, you know, just like the Foundation HQ stuff, when you can see those graphs, live data coming out of Foundation, and it's not somebody have to export it, put it to a spreadsheet, then make a graph, and it's just live data. I mean, the, the time to learning is just immediate versus, you know, a couple of days by having somebody run some reports for you. Yeah, I love that, Casey. I always say we're in the business to help you monitor, measure, and improve, and, and that's that's well said. Yeah, good stuff. Anything on anything else on the company change order? I don't think so. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> let's see. We have about 20 minutes left. This is this is an interesting one. So Project Data Health is was created because we've heard of um contractors, they'll see our a demo environment like what you're seeing now. You'll see a screenshot. And we have heard probably 30% of the time, oh, we're not ready for a tool like this. Casey, when we were um, in the sales process, I think that when uh, you saw the information and the demo, it clicked with you right away. But then we also showed you this particular dashboard and you stand out to me because I think that when you saw this, you saw an area of opportunity. The Project Data Health dashboard, um, from where we see it, was something that it'll help you effectively uh, um, uh, use foundation and, and enter and manage data, uh, identify correct data quality issues, and obviously improve the data quality um, uh, very quickly. These are the things that we saw, Casey. And again, um, we are a technology company, but I love to hear if you saw any other benefit related to the project data health and how uh, data is entered and managed and foundation. 
Yeah, I mean, Foundation is a super powerful accounting program. And like any program, there's more than one way to do things. And if you get what you want, hey, you're happy, right? You, you, don't, know, you don't know that it's right or wrong, but you're getting what you want. You're running your business. Everything's fine. Um, when we plug into something like Pronovos that has some different reporting, you can figure out like, oh, we could do that better because now I would have a better vision of that. The best example I could give you is um, historically for 30 years, we've tracked every job by the job name. Now, someplace we know who the owner is and someplace there's a GC and an owner. So we might track the job by who our contracts with or the name of the project. And then what, what happened is when we go to do these overranging um, like accounts payable conversations, we didn't see that we had one ultimate owner through four different GCs that were paying us at 90 days. So we wake up one day and this GC owes us four and a half million dollars and it hadn't dawned on us because we weren't putting the data in the right places in foundation until we look at Pronovus and go, oh, wow, they're paying at 89 days, one day before we file liens, but that's how they run their business. It's a, it's a big box building company. They know the game. They're one of the biggest in the country. They know how to manage their cash super effectively. And we ended up with more risk from a collection standpoint than we really wanted to. And when we can see that with the, the days to pay and how much they're doing in change orders, all of a sudden, we've got ourselves in a, in a much riskier situation than we knew. Um, luckily, we, we started this program with you guys, I think, in July. And we can start making some changes and getting, getting some collections done. So we are, as we get to the fall now, we're not near as upside down as far as how much cash they have on us if they wanted to apply leverage to us. Um, but yeah, there's just some places, um, I think, like pending change orders, another one came to mind. We track pending change orders in a spreadsheet. Great. It, you know, there's spreadsheet for every job. Um, if you have a system like this, and now you can have approved change orders, pending change orders, rejected change orders, and you can see histories and lists by manager, and you can really track stuff, all the, the, the value of the data you can see there. And it was just not putting in foundation. It wasn't foundation's fault. It's our fault. We just weren't using the system right. Um, but when you can see these reports and go, well, that, that graph doesn't work because we're not putting it in right. Well, that's on us. Um, and it really helped us level our game up with foundation usage. I love it. I, I, I love it. Um... I mean, one of, one of them, I think the quality in hours, um, yeah, our estimating system tracks hours. We just, we never imported them into foundation. So we have all these reports by hours. I mean, we changed it immediately. It'll take us a year to cycle through all the jobs. Uh, but we just, we had no reporting by how many hours were bid by Costco, how many we actually spent. And we, so we have all this analysis and we weren't even putting the input in of tracking the hours. So um, again, that's on us. That's just, that previously there wasn't great reporting to understand why we wanted it. Well, now we have tools like, yeah, we need to see that. And then we can, then we can analyze why we're overrunning on cost because it's a hours based issue. You know, I, I hear the saying all the time, uh, garbage in garbage out. And, and it kind of ends at that point. Well, this report will help you uh, basically convert that garbage into meaningful information so that you can get value and insight out of the system. Uh, I never uh, quite, um, really um, uh, felt comfortable with that statement, garbage in, garbage out, because nothing seemed to happen after that point. We just kind of lived with the garbage. But we said we got to do something to help people manage the information. And, and this, is, this is just one component. We have a similar one for the GL account uh, and, and, and other uh, modules within foundation. But, um, but I'm glad that, that you, you found value in that, Casey. And, and, and I, think, I think going in, we felt like we were a little underutilizing the foundation data. And the more you could see like, hey, you're doing seven out of 10 things per category. You're pretty good. Just a little tweak here, a little tweak there. And we're going to be awesome. Yeah. And, and, you know, let me uh, interject here, you know, to your point on, on the, you, you know, you're never dealing with the hours coming from your estimating system over to foundation. You know, no matter what system you're on. This just speaks volumes to continuing education. A lot of people buy a system. doesn't matter what it is. They buy it and they implement it to replace whatever system they're coming from. And, and they do the exact same thing that they used to do. Why did you buy this new application? And that's, again, where continuing education comes in. It, it's, it is invaluable. And then reporting tools like Pronovas offers can point out exactly why you need that continuing education. That's a great well point. Said. Well, well said, Brian, well said. Um, you know, uh, so Novos, we, we've been working with Foundation for a couple of years now, 
and the integration and partnership has been um, uh, great for um, for for each of us, and and also uh, the the value that foundation clients are getting uh, speaks for itself. And I appreciate Casey you taking the time to tell your story. Uh, we have a uh, an offering just for foundation software users, and basically uh, we have some information about how you can get started if you are not a Pronovos user. Uh, time to value is really important to us. And uh, and I see there's a poll uh, here. Um, if you take a moment and, and fill out the poll, uh, that'll be great. Kevin, I see you're on the line too. Uh, let me introduce you. Kevin is our um, product manager and he spends a lot of time with, with different clients and he also comes from the industry. So he understands the pain. Uh, Kevin, uh, you know, I, I know that you always looking at new ways that we can improve and help our um our clients and and so anything uh, in particular that you want to bring up about what we just went over or uh any new uh improvements or features you know i i think casey really said a lot of it i i love listening to casey talk it reminds me a lot when i used to work for a contractor casey remind me a lot of of the old ceo i used to work for and it really does highlight that this is not a a one-off problem that contractors are facing. It's, I think every contractor out there knows is we create a mountain of data. It's just, how do we make sense of it to gather the right insights we, we need to? Because I can't tell you that the number of jobs I was personally involved in where you would get to the end of the job, you'd be like, man, we went over budget. And you're like, well, why did that happen? And there was never that kind of feedback loop to learn and get better. And that's really what we're trying to do is kind of, okay, you, you put all this hard work in to build the jobs. You know, it's, Let's, let's not have to learn the lessons twice. What are these valuable insights we can get out of it and make sure we take those insights and apply it to the next job so we're constantly getting better as we go. So I don't have too much to add, add Bruce. I just want to say, Casey, it's, it's always a pleasure to hear you talk about these, these topics. Amen. Amen to that. Well, we have about 12 minutes left and um, just uh, take a peek here at the, at the questions. Uh, let's see, I see most of the questions got answered. Um, let's see. Well, um, did a phenomenal job, guys. I, I think that uh, I love that that saying, Brian, you know, is the continuing education. I think that's so, so important. And as I've mentioned many times, we are considered to be an, a company that educates first and then a technology company next. So, um uh, that's that's what we live for um so let's see am i missing anything before we wrap this up uh brian derek uh casey or kevin you know one thing i'd add that that's quite the offer bruce you're offering out there for the free implementation um especially data through the end of the year so i mean i assume if people are on this list they're interested in this and i would just encourage you give them a call get plugged in you, you might have to have your it people help a little bit to get some firewall stuff done but i mean literally it was it was awesome how fast we got data and just the training and the figuring out the stuff. I mean, if you're on this call and you're interested, just reach out to them, give it a try. I mean, what, what do you got to lose here at this one with this great offer he's giving you? No, I, I appreciate that. And I see we do have a question. This is for you, Casey. Was there anything on the dashboards you wish uh, was implemented? I, I guess if there's anything that you don't see, and I know we only showed just a few. I think we have 17 plus dashboards out there, but is there anything that uh, you 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 wish uh, was implemented? You know, I can, um, I don't know if you're the question is specifically for the data we're entering or, you know, future growth. Um, you know, I always want more as a CEO. I want, I want more, I want more, I want more. So, you know, I do have a list of favorite things that uh, I'd like to talk to Bruce about, and we're working through some of those. Um, and, and I think we're going to make it happen. Um, what I love about working with with Bruce and his team is I go, hey, I would love for this to work this way. And they're like, well, why do you want that? And I explain like, oh, that's a great idea. Let's see if we can make that happen. Um, and so it's just this interactive conversation of, hey, what you've given me was better than I ever had before. And it just it's like the tip of the iceberg. Now I now I want more. I want I want expansion. I want more detail. Um, so it just really opened up my eyes to what was out there that I didn't I didn't have that before. Um, but there's you know, the majority of the things that you need to be up and going quickly are already functioning. 
Uh, there's a couple of little nuanced things that, that maybe are just, you know, a problem we're having today because of material management. That's not really a long-term problem. You know, that's a nuance issue. Uh, but the big picture items, billings, cash, collections, change orders, you know, all that stuff is up and running right now. Nice. Hey, Casey, do you do anything, and I know this doesn't apply to all contractors, but in your industry, uh, you have very measurable quantities. Are you getting any sort of production reporting so you can, you know, you look at, at, at the production rate that you're estimating, and, and now that you're bringing in hours, you know, I know Foundation can calculate. I used to do these reports all the time when I was consulting with clients, too. Say, hey, you're supposed to be moving X number of yards of dirt per hour. To date, this crew is, is moving only this rate. And, and there's a catch up value that, hey, you know, I'm glad we caught this early because we still have time to address the problem. I imagine with this type of technology that Pernovas is using, you can do even more. Get it. Well, get it, there's know, another one of my favorite reports on there that we, we didn't cover today, and it's the root cause analysis for for plus and minuses. Um, I think Bruce has got like 13 different buckets. So as a manager can enter in, hey, we, we lost money in this item. Ah, it's because estimating forgot something. Oh, we lost money in this because the field, yeah, we had to do it twice. Um, and so you just track this on a monthly basis. And then, you know, every quarter, every month, every end of the year, whatever, you can have a report that summarizes where's our problems? How do we focus on getting better? Because if we're not careful, we just, we just end up trying to fix everything and we don't get anything done. Um, again, so this just provides that insight to the data for us to focus on how do we get better? Um, and, and there's just some, there's some great information here that we can dig into. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a great question, actually. Well, um, you know, I guess um, what I can do is turn it back over to, to you, Brian. Uh, if uh, no one else has anything, I think that in the world of Zoom, rarely are we able to get some of our time back. So, um, so, so yeah, I'll turn it over to you, Brian. Yeah, I, I, I have a question come in on the chat asking if we can share this recording to the attendees. I assume somebody can help with that. Absolutely. Yes, it's recorded, will be edited, and will be made uh, available, um, as I heard from John. So I'm assuming the attendees will probably get an email link. If I'm not that's mistaken, true. that's generally how it works. And that's you know, it my me. name and number's on there, too. Um, if you guys want anything specific, feel free to call me. Um, I'll make my controller available. If somebody wants to have their controller, talk to our controller. Um, and just really figure out the nuances of what it takes to make this thing happen. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime. It's great. Casey, do you want to uh, throw out your email address? It doesn't look like it's listed here on this final slide. Yeah, let me see. Yep, I can put it right here. All right. Excellent. Perfect. That's great. Yeah, and, and again, we just appreciate everybody taking the time to to uh, join us today. Uh, you know, I wasn't thinking much about it earlier on, but you know, since we're kind of talking and continuing education, um, this is a, a great tool to use as an educator to the staff. I, I think with Casey's point for sure. You know, a lot of times you get project managers and people just don't have a stake necessarily in the overall company. We all do. Obviously, we need our companies to be successful in order for us to be successful. But to be able to look at your individual projects and, and see how it is impacting the business directly, that, you know, when you're not getting those billings out on time, when you're upside down on cash flow, yes, maybe the company can float that, no problem. But what happens when times tighten up and maybe we can't? You know, learning how to properly manage these things and, and get cash in the door, it's, uh, it's critical and, and it's, it's a great thing. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone, Brian, uh, Derek, Casey. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to present with you. I think that Project HQ is a phenomenal add-on to foundation. And, um, and yeah, this has been, this has been a, uh, a, a great opportunity here. Fantastic. Guys, thanks for having us uh, join you today. All right. Well, I hope you all have a great week. You too. You all too. Right. Thanks, guys. Thanks.